What's going on there, guys? Good Monday evening. It is I, the Earthmaster, here on this Monday, October 4th date, 2021, about 6.40 p.m. California time. The latest quake on the globe is going to be a 4.4 in the South America region. Pretty deep earthquake into the Peru-Chile Trench, the subduction zone there along that plate boundary. Let's go ahead and check out some activity occurring around the globe, including some activity at Yellowstone National Park once again. Pretty good size earthquake swarm kicking off in the northwest corner, kind of west central, I guess, right around the Mary Lake Norris Junction area. See a pretty intense earthquake swarm kicking off within the last couple hours. Looking back over the last day or so, we had some sporadic earthquake activity. You can see all these spikes indicating that microquake activity, but over the last, oh, I'd say about three or four hours, things have really ramped up into the Yellowstone National Park area. A lot of this earthquake activity showing up on numerous stations around the uh, Yellowstone area. Let's go ahead and see what the USGS is reporting on this here. 2.5 and above. Let's go ahead and drop this down to the all magnitudes. Surprise, surprise. They're actually issuing a little bit of the earthquake activity that's been happening there at Yellowstone National Park. Not all of it. Definitely not all of it because I can tell you there's a lot more um, on this map of earthquake activity than what the USGS is showing here on this map. They're only showing about 12 earthquakes uh, within the vicinity of Yellowstone National Park. It looks like uh, uh, they'll have to go through and definitely add quite a bit more uh, once they review all the earthquakes that are taking place. It looks like some of these magnitudes are getting up there as well, including a couple mid twos kicking off there at Yellowstone National Park. That's going to be some of these, uh, these larger ones, the more defined red marked earthquakes those are kind of the uh, twos that were taking place all these other ones are definitely earthquakes uh, but just not as strong as those two pointers that's showing up on the usgs map here quite a bit of movement along the western coast including southern california intermountain west regions really uh rock rocking and rolling as well this all due uh, in part due to the uh, pressure out here along the west coast and the Cascadia subduction zone where we're looking at a massive amount of tremor once again. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. You can see some of the earthquake activity ramping up along the plate boundary of the San Andreas. You got the San Andreas Fault rocking and rolling with a swarm of earthquake activity right next to the San Andreas Fault here. You can see those th um, three earthquakes or so within the last hour indicated there in the red circles. 2.8, 2.8, couple twos there, including a 3.8 well up north near Pinnacles, California, uh, in the coastal range, in this little range here, just to the west of the plate boundary. But uh, that was earlier. Since then, we're looking at a new swarm on the North American side of this plate boundary. Just a very high indicated, um, complex activity that's taken place here in Southern California. A lot of pressure being applied out here along the West Coast, folks. Southern California down here, not a whole lot. Right now, just seems to be focused uh, pretty much north of the Garlock Fault structure. Uh, northward areas, northward uh, Ridgecrest, Long Valley Super Volcano, Antelope Valley area, and uh, movement into Nevada as well, as well near the Tonopah region. But looking at... Uh, uh, a new swarm of activity north of Beatty in the uh, Nevada area. Really haven't had a chance to look at this, but uh, definitely looking at uh, some swarming going on. Somewhat variable depths as well, ranging from uh, some surface quaking all the way down to about 8 uh, kilometers or so. Some, some of these even deeper, 11 kilometers for uh, that 1.7. This swarm just kind of popped up out of the blue. Uh, a lot of heightened earthquake activity is uh, where we have seen prior earthquakes, larger earthquakes, six pointers up here uh, in the Nevada area from last year and also uh, around the Antelope Valley area. They had that, uh, I can't remember the magnitude down there, but it's been a couple months since the larger quake struck. But uh, we're looking at increase in pressure along the West Coast indicative of uh, obviously from all this aftershock activity, it's pretty obvious. Uh, what's going on out here along the west coast intermountain great basin area as well seeing some movement out here around the lovelock lovelock area of nevada there's all the movement up into the yellowstone area and also idaho the sawtooth fault system looking at some significant earthquake activity ramping up today as well a 3.0 the largest quake in that sequence of earthquakes there in idaho also through the intermountain or through the uh 
the Cascades up in the Pacific Northwest. Seen some movement uh, just outside of Mount St. Helens. You can see a couple small microquakes there. Actually, it looks like it's right at the summit as well. This activity, no doubt, associated with the tremor that's taken place along the Cascadia subduction zone. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick on the PNSN tremor map. Here we got 771 epicenters today alone. That's just today, folks. Uh, quite a bit of movement in Northern California and up around the Seattle area, okay? Now, if we go back yesterday, I, I, I gotta show you guys this. We're looking at over 814 epicenters yesterday. And the day prior to that, looking at 820 epicenters. I'm gonna put a tally here together in a little bit and show you guys, that one's 491. I wanna go back here and show you guys the movement. Let's go back the last two weeks of activity. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Do, do, do. Right there. Let's see what we come up with a tally here. Wow. So that's a lot, folks. That's just since September 20th. You guys see that number? That's a pretty significant amount of trimmer that's been ongoing and continuous in the Cascadia subduction zone. It's it's nonstop, folks. Today, what I mentioned about 700 and something. So still continuing. That explains all the um, earthquake activity and perhaps... Uh, the Yellowstone activity as well, the swarming that's taken place there. It might seem like, well, Oregon coast, Cascadia, is a long ways away from Yellowstone. But you got to think about how these plates move as a whole and as one regional pressure on the major increase here just due to this subduction zone activity uh, that's taken apart, taken part here with the Juan de Fuca plate. And all the pressure here from the Pacific Plate as well, North American Plate um, interaction, creating all this activity and slippage along the Cascadia. I think, uh, I, mean, I still think it's an area to watch. I mean, we've seen quite a bit of tremor over the last two weeks, 7,254. Here's kind of a, a little chart up here, if you will, looking at the daily activity and those days that had over 800 epicenters of trimmer are not all that common. If you look back here to around 2017, uh, let's see if I can get that. It was like, uh, let's see, it was, it was Christmas Eve, I believe, 2017, when we had, uh, well, there's 844 on the 25th. And then uh, I know on the 24th, we had one that was over a thousand. Uh, on that day. I just can't, I, for some reason, I can't get it to pop up there. <clears throat> but it doesn't happen all that often. We just don't get those large numbers day in, day out. You can go back and look at these maps or these charts here over the years and see that, yeah, they run about 300, 400, 500, sometimes 600 a day. But this past week, we've seen a couple days there of over 800 epicenters daily along the Cascadia subduction zone. So it's not all that common I can say without a doubt just by looking at this map that goes back to or this chart that goes back to 2010 so um, definitely be on guard here folks along the uh, Pacific Northwest it's not fear-mongering but info that I'm putting out uh, a lot of movement along the Cascadia right now with that trimmer uh, kicking up Let's check out the uh, Aleutian Trench, looking pretty quiet up there. Typical microquake activity into the Alaska region. Once again, very quiet here along the Japan Trench northward. Just a little 4.5 that struck uh, earlier today, 35 kilometers off the coast of Japan. Uh, looks like into the uh, Japan Trench region, but nothing significant. There is a line of activity from Fiji uh, westward through the Indonesia area with continued deep movement around the Fiji Islands area again 181 kilometers of course as you get here towards the center of this hook type horseshoe deal 537 kilometers for that 4.9 pretty deep movement once again but west coast lighting up like a Christmas tree folks a lot of a lot of stuff going on along the Pacific plate right now and the North American plate inter interjunction here 
Uh, you got to think about this, right? What's what's creating subduction? What's creating this pressure up here along the Cascadia? It's it's a uh, it's a whole lot. Uh, North American plate and the Pacific plate interaction definitely creating that activity. And uh, uh, with the tremor uh, along the Cascadia, we're looking at quite a bit of movement into the south part of uh, uh, south part of that area uh, as well into parts of California. Over here along the Peco, uh, Pecos, Texas area, we did see some movement increasing as well with a couple threes and twos in this area of Texas. Also up in the can beautiful state of Kansas, a 3.8. Striking up there uh, well north of Wichita, looks like near Salina. And some movement along the New Madrid system as well, 1.4 near Wrigley, Tennessee. The rest of the east looks pretty quiet. Puerto Rico area fairly quiet as well folks the movement in the Hawaii area uh, has calmed down around the Kilauea volcano but we're still seeing the southeast area uh, shown significant movement at about the 30 kilometer depth that we expect to see um, their daily activity uh, let's see what else we got here folks uh, we showed the Yellowstone that's uh, just gotta keep an eye on it folks I mean Yellowstone I don't, I don't think it's gonna pop but it's an obvious sign of uh, quite a bit of plate tectonic stress in the North American plate that includes inland into the Intermountain West regions. Those mountains didn't form um, overnight and they certain didn't, certainly didn't form um, from rainbows. <laughs> it's from pressure, right? Plate dynamics and interaction and, and uh, a whole lot of stuff created those mountains, the Rocky Mountains and areas around the Yellowstone region. I believe this is purely plate tectonic stress outwork and not volcanic. I don't see any signs of any volcanic tremor or harmonic tremor or any type of magma movement that I can see here on these maps. Uh, let's see what else we got here along the sun. Solar weather looks pretty quiet at the moment, folks. Diminishing, if you can get any more diminished than that. Uh, over the next few days here with sunspot activity very quiet uh, earth side looking pretty uh, pretty pretty minimal maybe this one back here we might have to watch a little bit we'll see if that uh, pops up but uh, for now things are pretty quiet on the sun all right guys I'm gonna jump off here have a, a beautiful evening and stay safe out there we'll chat you guys another time peace out